All right, Lewis dot diagrams, sometimes they're also called Lewis structures. These are an easy, easy way to draw the representation of the atomic structure. The main difference between Bohr models and Lewis dot diagrams is that we only care about the outermost shell. Okay, so we only care about the outermost shell. That means that when I'm drawing myself a Bohr model, all I do is I just care about what happens in that outermost shell. So let's pick one. Let's go with phosphorus. Phosphorus. Okay, no longer do I care about protons and neutrons. I can figure that out when I need to. So there is my nucleus. If I need to figure out neutrons, you just do the little calculation. So I'm going to just do a real quick job here. There's 15 electrons in this orbit. So two in my first, eight in my second, five in my third. Okay, I don't need to draw the dots anymore. That ends up equaling 15. That's the atomic number for phosphorus. My outermost shell is right here. That's my outermost shell. And all I care about for phosphorus is the outermost shell, which has five. So one, two, three, four, five. There. That's your Lewis dot diagram for phosphorus. Let's try another one. Let's try one. Let's try sodium. Sodium is an A. Push pause for a second here and actually give sodium a try. See if you can do it. Okay, hopefully you gave it a whirl. Sodium's Na. It's 11 on your periodic table, which means it goes 2, 8, and 1. My outermost shell is 1. That's all I care about. Na with one dot on it. Nice. Let's try one from the noble gases. Let's go with argon. Argon is AR. Argon is a little bit of a trick because argon, well, when I draw out my really quick Bohr model, it's 18, so that's 2, 8, and 8. And now my outermost shell has got 8, so argon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? There's three real quick Bohr models for you. You know what? I got the space. I'm going to draw one more. Let's go with carbon. Carbon is C. Carbon has got six, so two, four. And for carbon, one, two, three, four. There you go. Four real quick Lewis dot diagrams, really, really easy to draw and gives us a lot of information. For instance, on this first one, you know that you would just need one, two, three electrons to be, become stable, so you know that your ionic charge is going to be three minus. On this one, you know that you need to get rid of one, so you're going to have Na1 plus. This one needs nothing, so it's going to be Ar0. And carbon, it can either lose or gain four, so it's either going to be plus or minus four. Okay, but we're not really interested in that right now. We're interested in drawing with the dot diagrams. So hopefully you have got that figured out. There you go.